Hello, I'm Amy Blaylock. Welcome to City Hall this week. Police officials from throughout the state are coordinating efforts to fight violent crime in North Carolina. A statewide summit on violence was held in Durham on October 13th in response to a rash of street shootings and other street violence earlier this year. And we thought that it was very important that we as a city start to put together operations to address that, which we did. But at the same point in time, we come to realize that this is not just a national problem, but this is something that our neighbors here in, uh, in North Carolina are also experiencing. And since we've always looked to work together, myself and Rocky Mount Chief James Moore sat down during the summer and we started to talk about putting something together that not only brings uh, police chiefs and law enforcement together, but also those who they work with or they work for in the city and uh, who also make a lot of the, uh, the policy changes in the city so that we can sit down and jointly work on solutions for the state. Among the topics discussed were illegal drugs, gangs, gun laws, reoffenders, and ages of violent offenders. I think there are a lot of uh, different elements that are, that are going on. We have individuals who are being released from prison and uh, now they are involved in, uh, in a lot of the violence or trying to regain control of whatever criminal enterprise they were in prior to. Uh, we're also looking at uh, a lot of uh, teen uh, violence that we have where we have young individuals who are part of groups, part of gangs, and they get into conflicts, not just gang to gang, but also within organizations where it's, it's uh, the way that they reach into to, you know, power. Also, you have to look at the fact that uh, a lot of today's youth are utilizing violence as a mean by which to handle their problems. That has to be addressed too. Law enforcement's not the only one who can do it, and that's why we really need to have the individuals like city managers and mayors at the table also to talk about the resources that the law enforcement needs outside of the police. Mayors and chief town administrators were invited to attend the summit, as were representatives from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, the United States Marshal Service, and the Drug Enforcement Administration. No, we try to get in uh, individuals who are in the, not just the political realm, but really the bosses of the chiefs of police who are uh, from these towns and these cities, so that, that we could sit down with city managers, with mayors, and talk about the way that they need to collaborate together, uh, they need to work together. There needs to be a support from city government of the police department so that the police department can not only garner the resources that they'll need to address this problem, but also the support that they'll need when they're working with the community and gaining the community trust. In turn, Chief Lopez says all the cities and towns involved in the summit need help from their respective communities and letting them know who is committing the violence. We need to get the community uh, to rise up and say we're not going to tolerate it in our community, we're not going to have it in our city, and they need to start working with the police department because the community are the ones who know where these guns are, these individuals are, what the plan is, and uh, in order to, to bring forth violence. So we need to really work together with them. We're also in the city of Durham going into different locations with specialized units and these units are identifying individuals involved. They're getting intelligence information. We have our crime analysis and intelligence division working together with our patrols and specialized units in order to identify these individuals who are causing all of this problems. Summit participants decided to continue their discussions about violent crime at a state level and to highlight the need for community collaboration with residents, educational institutions, faith-based communities, and social services organizations. The accomplishments, uh, quite simply, are first of all, uh, networking and finding out what we're all doing. Getting our information together, I think that's, and I also think that there's been some awakening uh, with some chiefs and some uh, political leaders who are seeing what we're doing in a different light and are hopefully are more motivated to not only work together, but work towards a positive end. Much needed repairs to Durham City Hall and Annex are now complete. The $6.5 million renovation project consisted of three major sub-projects. 
Those included the repair of the exterior of City Hall and Council Chambers and removal and replacement of the exterior staircase along Mangum Street, repair of the City Hall Annex Plaza deck, and replacement of the failing chillers with energy efficient modular chillers. A new outdoor seating area on Mangum Street Plaza is also now available to residents and employees. Durham's new Civil Rights History Mural is allowing residents to appreciate the city's role in the civil rights movement in a more artistic way. The 2400 square foot mural is located on the outside wall of the Durham Convention Center. A dedication ceremony was held to mark its completion on October 17th. The mural showcases various moments in the city's civil rights history as remembered and interpreted by a group of community members who range in age from 15 to 65. The $20,000 in funding for the project was supported by cultural master plan funds designated for public art. The new fitness center at the Holton Career and Resource Center is open and ready to be used. During a grand opening celebration on October 13th, participants got a chance to learn about fitness programs available at the center and to participate in a free class and other fitness demonstrations. The center features treadmills, recumbent bikes, elliptical machines, free weights, and other strength training equipment. It will be open seven days a week and will be available for a free trial period until November 1st. After the trial period, anyone who wants to use the center can buy a DPR wellness package for $20 per month for city residents. The cost for non-city residents is $30 per month. For more information, visit the Durham Parks and Recreation homepage on the city's website. If you're interested in helping to protect Durham's trees from a natural threat, Trees Across Durham wants to hear from you. Trees Across Durham is offering free workshops and free tree banding materials as part of the new Band Together campaign to prevent the damaging effects of canker worms. Canker worms are pests that threaten the health of trees, leaving them weak and susceptible to pests and environmental stressors such as drought and heat. Banding helps to stop the canker worm cycle by creating sticky barriers to block flightless female moths from crawling to the top of trees and laying eggs. For more information about the upcoming workshops and free tree banding materials, visit the City County Sustainability Office's homepage on the City's website. There are two upcoming city-sponsored events we want to make sure you're aware of just in time for the Halloween weekend. The first is a fall festival that will be held on Friday, October 30th from 6 until 8 p.m. at the Holton Career and Resource Center. Kids of all ages are invited to join in the fun as the center kicks off its new fall programs. And then on Saturday, October 31st, West Point on the Eno will host its annual Hollow Eno event from 6 until 9 p.m. This Halloween event is designed particularly for children ages 12 and under. It features campfire stories and songs, hay rides, treats, crafts, games, and face painting. The entire family is welcome to participate in this free Halloween tradition. That does it for City Hall this week. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. You can also find us on demand on Durham Television Network's webpage and on YouTube. I'm Amy Blaylock. Thank you for joining us. This has been a production of Durham Television Network.